Hello everybody, I am Roger Dove and I really can't believe that it's been 10 years since we launched Roger Parfum. I wanted to make these short videos to tell the story of my journey through perfumery and the journey of Roger Parfum in 10 short stories. Perfume number one, a goodnight kiss. The inspiration for this scent comes from the story of me as a small boy when my mother came into my bedroom to kiss me goodnight before she went off to either a dinner party or a cocktail. It's the very first time I can remember making a connection between a person, a perfume, and a moment in time. If my mother hadn't given me that goodnight kiss, I wouldn't be speaking to you today because maybe my life story would be totally different. A goodnight kiss is about the tenderness of a moment that stays in our memory, just like perfume itself. I hope you love it as much as I loved creating it. It is one of the most intimate scents I've ever made. Perfume number two, Diaghilev. I had always, always been fascinated by Diaghilev and his impact on the decorative arts. So I couldn't believe it on my very first trip to Russia, I was given a private tour inside the Kremlin. I don't know whether it was because Russian was one of the languages I'd studied when I was young or because of my love of Diaghilev. But there I was inside this extraordinary building and the woman who was showing me around showed me the oldest double-headed eagle within the building and asked if I understood why it had two heads. She explained that the double-headed eagle looks to the east and looks to the west because Russia is the largest country in the world. And it made me stop to think how brilliant it would be to make a scent called Diaghilev, inspired by the man, but also the majesty of this country with its great stories and its richness of design and literature. So Diaghilev is one perfume I've always said that I hope I'm always remembered for creating. It is majestic and imperial, and it gave me the idea to launch it in a new collection called the Imperial Collection. The next scent is Amber Oud. I think my reputation for creating ouds comes from a very, very simple source, but I was lucky enough to spend three years of my life working in the Gulf, where I spent two weeks every month for three years, where I learned about Oud, Bachur, Mahalat, and all the things that make up these magical, magical uh, ambery perfumes from the East. So the great loves of the Middle East are rose and saffron, which you find in Oud, amber, which is the basis of amber Oud, and the musk Oud. It's gone on to become one of our most loved perfumes all around the world. Thank you always for your support. Oud is a very, very special material. And just a little story, why I spell it with an A at the beginning. It's a homage to the people of the Middle East as they don't pronounce it Oud, they pronounce it Oud. H. Oud was made exclusively for Harrods. Harrods holds a special place in my heart as well as that of Roger Parfum because it's where we launched the brand. This scent is really, really woody and warm, wrapped around a note of Oud. It was a very special tribute to a place that's always supported us, that we love enormously, that has been the birthplace of Roger Parfum. For the next creation, I'd like you to imagine you're me for just a second. I was sitting in my office one day and I got a call saying, we'd like you to come to Downing Street. So I said, okay. So I end up turning up at Downing Street, the home of our prime minister. I sat down and they said, we want to make you an ambassador for the Great Britain campaign. So I'm very proud to say I'm one of approximately 30 ambassadors, cultural ambassadors for our country. The very first great festival was held in Istanbul and I was asked, could I make the scent of the country? A bit of an odd thing to have to think how your country smells, but I made this creation, Great Britain. It has a lot of leather and wood because I thought of all the ancient trees in our country and the Houses of Parliament with its leather seats. I thought of majesty with the symbol of the country being the rose. And I also thought of a very, very delicate flower, the little tiny violet that you could crush underfoot and not even know it. So this perfume, a big leathery sheep wrapped around an note of violet, a classic Russian leather, became for me the symbol of the country. I was really, really pleased when we asked whether it were possible to be able to sell the perfume with the Union flag and the legend of the story I've just told you. It's something I'm incredibly proud of, as I'm really, really proud of being an ambassador for Great Britain. 
This is an incredibly personal scent because it's mine. And the thing of it's mine is really part of its story. I'd worn the same scent for years and the formula was changed and I suddenly had to think how I wanted to smell. And that's how this came about. Anyone who knows me knows I never change my scent. I always smell this way. And wherever I travel, people always comment on the scent and ask me one of two questions. How much is it? Where can I buy it? And I always say, you can't, it's mine. I was traveling uh, with a colleague of mine, Dominic, and somebody asked the same question and he said, you really should sell it. And I said, I don't want to, it's mine. So I sounded like a petulant child. But he went on and on and on and I said, okay, I'll launch it. I'm happy to make it. It will launch on the 25th of September, which is my birthday, and I will make 25 bottles. 25 for Britain, 25 for the rest of the world. If it sells, that's great. And if not, I'll be happy because I'll have a supply of the scent. Today, the scent has sort of got a little cult status all of its own. And we make 250 bottles of it a year for Britain and 250 for the rest of the world. And whilst the world has the scent, really, it's still mine, which is why on the label, you'll see it just has my signature. Many people refer to it as Oat Lux. That's not actually its name. That's a collection that was developed around it. The scent is called Roger. That's me. So when I was creating this scent, it was very simple. It literally contains every one of my favorite raw materials. But when I was asked if I would make it for sale, I decided I needed to do something which appealed to my sense of humor. And that was, I wanted the interior of it to be full of gold, as I love gold. And it's really a bit tongue in cheek because when people see the gold, they always say, is that real gold? And we can say, yes, it is. But things like the Oris inside take six years to produce and cost three and a half times the price of gold. And the ambergris in it costs 10 times the price of the gold. So yes, it's gold, but compared to the raw materials, the gold's sort of nothing. Anyhow, I hope you love it. It's funny what can happen over a lunch. I was sitting with the buying director of Selfridges who said they were launching a big campaign called Shakespeare Refashioned to celebrate 400 years of Shakespeare's creativity. I was asked, could I make a scent based around something to do with Shakespeare? I said, yes, immediately. A Midsummer Night's Dream came to my mind. At exactly the same time, the Great Campaign launched something called Shakespeare Lives, where I was asked if I could recite one of my favorite pieces of poetry. That was easy. Two blushing pilgrims came to mind. But for this scent, I stopped to think of the fight between Tatiana and Oberon, the story of love, the story of flora and fauna, everything that is in A Midsummer Night's Dream. But for this scent, I changed its name and called it A Midsummer Dream, because I think it's not a scent just for one night. I was thrilled that it was the biggest selling perfume in Selfridges on the year it launched, and now it's gone on to be globally loved, which brings great joy to my heart. Elysium, paradise for heroes. That was the inspiration for this creation, which we launched in August 2017. It astonishes me just how popular this scent has become. Month on month, year on year, more and more people seem to fall under its spell. The idea behind this creation was paradise, but what can that be? Just gazing at the sky. So the idea of weightlessness, but whilst being grounded on the earth. So I think it's a surprise to people just how fresh and bright the scent is, but how it lasts and lasts and lasts. So it's really become one of the great light motifs of Roger Parfum. I hope you love it. And for all of you who have loved it so far, thank you for your support with it. It's very special. In 2016, I was both proud and thrilled when we opened our flagship store in the Burlington Arcade in the center of London. We opened at number 51, and for the opening of the store, I created a special scent called 51. And that is exactly how the number's written over our front door. I couldn't believe and can't believe just how loved this perfume is now all around the world. And so it's one scent that takes center stage in our new collection of Essence de Parfum in this presentation with the small crystals on the front. I hope you love it. It's like the most an interpretation of the most precious place in the world through a scent. 
which in one way is classical, but in another way is very, very unexpected, like the Burlington Arcade itself. 1819, one of the most peculiar stories you'll ever hear behind a perfume. The name 1819 is in fact the year that the Burlington Arcade was opened, the place where we have our flagship store in London. This perfume was made, everything was ready for the launch, and then the global pandemic happened, COVID closed the world. So we had to decide what to do with this perfume, as everything was made and ready for the launch. So we decided that we would launch it through our social media channels, and we really, really couldn't believe the response. I think it's astounded everybody. We of course all love perfume, but who could have imagined how perfume would have reigned supreme throughout the whole of lockdown. I believe that it gave us escapism and helped us forget the ugliness of everything that we've all been through and are still going through. So we launched this scent and we sold out of all the stock we made. And it was kind of pinch me, pinch me, did that really happen? Because we wondered whether anybody would dream of buying a scent that they had never ever smelt before. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your support. It really gave enormous energy and made people's morale fly within our company because it made us understand how much you love and appreciate our brand and all the things we try to do. I'd like to thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed listening to my stories of 10 of the perfumes that have really shaped the 10 years that Roger Parfum has been in existence. Thank you for all of your support. Thank you for the love. Thank you for everything you do that makes Roger Parfums what it is today.